Hi, this is Agap Sherinian, but you might also know me as No Squared, and I'm the lead developer behind Nowular Productions LLC. You can find our website at www.nowular.com. Today I would like to present our new software, Nowular Grapher, and I believe the best way to do so would be to just start using it. So for example, let's say we want a line, y equals x, or maybe we want a parabola, y equals x squared, or maybe a third degree plus a second degree plus first and maybe a different coefficient and so on now this is a very basic um, explicit equation and you'll notice as we type uh, we get updates and if the equation is missing something then we get the error on the bottom expect the two arguments to plus sign and something else we can do is not explicit but implicit so for example let's say we want a circle so x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared and once again notice that as we type we get the we get the result maybe you want an ellipse so plus x times y or maybe negative x times y minus x times y and here we get an ellipse um, similarly if we just change this to not that but we change it to a uh, greater than then we get where x squared plus y squared minus xy is greater than 5 to, five to the second um, if we change this to a greater than or equal to you also get the surface itself including the greater than part similarly we can do less than or we can just do less than without the surface or if you want you can just keep the less than and then do the surface separately if you want and now something else you can do is if you don't have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to and you just have a simple less than or greater than you can actually use boolean um, boolean expressions so for example let's say we want this expression to be true and we want y to be greater than zero so now we have this area inside the ellipse and y is greater than zero. Um, this is this is pretty useful for denoting um, certain parts of a graph or just plain old boolean expressions. Um, now if you go to relations you'll notice that we can toggle the visibility, we can change the color, change the thickness, and we can also change the draw uh, index which is the draw order. Right now you'll notice that um, the the surface is plotted uh, b before the boolean plot so if we increase draw index to 1 now the surface is plotted on top of it and you can notice this on the graph here now this is more useful when it comes to um, overlapping transparent uh, relations boolean plots and so on and that's when you could use the opacity over here which lets you change how transparent a relation is this is mainly useful when we make the boolean plot fully fully filled so here we're editing the pattern and notice that when we have the pattern fully filled the boolean plot covers the whole area so now if we were to say y equals x um, and change the y equals x color let's make it um, red for example the y equals x is on top of the on top of the boolean plot but if we set the boolean plot to be on top you can't see it so then if we just lower the transparency we get a nice well-ordered plot um, now if we just go back to output and let's go back to our ellipse over here what we can do is now we can use time-based animation so for example let's say um, sine of time times this and if we go over to time over here we'll, we'll notice that time is zero right now the time multiplier is one and we can start and stop time so let's just start time and you'll notice that our ellipse animates according to time we can change the animation speed ma make it faster or we can even make it negative to go in negative time so to speak additionally we can animate the radius for example so 
plus sine of time again. And this time when we start time, not only does the ellipse animate um, in terms of which direction it's facing, but the radius animates as well. Now if we go to in, into options over here, we'll notice various options, um, including the window, minimum, maximum, the steps on the window. So for example, right now we have it at every two units. So maybe if we make it every five units, you'll notice negative 10, negative 5, 0, 5, and this will be 10. Um, uh, we can edit the window itself in real time, as you'll notice like this. And something else we can do is, let me just show you, for example, let's do y equals sine of x. Now this, this isn't animated, there's no time parameter here. However, we can animate our window, so let's say 10 plus time, well negative 10 plus time and 10 plus time. And now when we start time, you'll notice that the relation itself is not animated, however the window is animated. Um, in this case, it's not particularly useful for anything, but let me demonstrate a case where it is useful. Let me just set the standard window here. And if we scroll down, you'll notice theta min at negative 10 and theta max at 10. So let's set the theta min to 0 and the theta max to 2 pi. And let's set the theta step to pi over 24, for example. And let's do r equals theta. We get a small spiral here, which is, as we expect, um, 0 pi, then pi, then 2 pi. But what happens when we set... Let's, let's create a bigger step, by pi over 2. But what happens when we set the maximum to time? And then we reset time, and then we start time. And our spiral grows with time, since the maximum theta grows. This is pretty useful for animating complex polar graphs, um, even even animating um, parametric graphs. And our par uh, here are our variables. We have uv parametric um, and theta and phi for um, polar and spherical. And let's look at the other options. We have the axis names, we have the axis colors, and we can not draw the grid if we don't want to. We can center the grid if we want to, in which case changing the axis color will change well the axis color. Or we can change labels. So for example, if x was time, then you can simply type time and instead of x it'll say time. Additionally, we can not draw the axes and not draw the labels. Furthermore, if we go to themes, we can choose different type of themes. For example, dark theme, custom, light theme. And we can change the background color, grid color, text color, and fonts manually if we wish to. And we can also save images. So for example, if we were to click save and test.png, and then we go over here, here's our image. Additionally, we can save a transparent image. And once again, our image is here, and it will be transparent. If you were to display it on top of something. Um, now, let me demonstrate various other features. So for example, let's do our good old circle. And maybe a different y equals sine of y plus x, maybe. And maybe y equals negative x. Yeah, okay. Now, if you go to tracing and we enable tracing, you'll notice that as we drag over the graph panel, the closest point on each relation is given to us in the panel on the left, and it's drawn for us. Similarly, if we toggle intersections, the grapher will automatically compute all of the intersections between all of the visible relations on the graph. So in this case, we have negative x and y equals sine of y plus x intersecting at 0, 0, which it says right here. Similarly, we have the circle intersecting our y equals negative x and the circle intersecting our y equals sine of y plus x. This also works with animation. So for example, if we were to animate our radius here,
and start time. You'll notice that the intersections animate along with the relations. Now let's go back. Let's delete these. Let's toggle intersections off. And now something else we can do is let's go let's once once again let's create an ellipse just for testing. And then we can start time. And then we go over to recording. Now if you click start recording, we're asked for a file. So let's say test.av i. And now we're recording at 24 frames per second. We can trace things once again. We can add relations in real time. Toggle intersections in real time. Etc. Then if we stop time and we simply stop recording, we go to our just let it open. And we notice our animated file tracing and we have a new relation the intersections and then it stops now you can use this to export animated GIF files and etc now um, we've seen just about all of two-dimensional things so let's go to three dimensions we can zoom out and rotate so for example let's type y um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 5 squared Maybe let's do it 7 squared make it bigger you'll notice that we can rotate and we can also change the light position by holding down out um, once again we can animate the window and such we can animate the graph itself so for example plus sign of time and then we start time and the graph animates it's a tiny bit slower than in two dimensions but it highly depends on your processor and after all three dimensions are a bit more expensive than two dimensions now what else we can create tables if we want so for example let's get a Let's get rid of this one and let's create a new table table one. Let's create one point at zero 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 zero. And maybe four, five, six, and maybe negative three, negative two, negative uh, eight. And then if we were to say table one, we get our table in three dimensions. Similarly, if we didn't include a Z component, we would get the table in two dimensions. Not a very interesting table, but useful. Perhaps if you were to load a table or save a table and such. Now, that just about concludes everything I wanted to show you. Um, we have all types of relations. We have I showed you explicit, implicit. Um, oh, something you've been seeing. For example, when I type y equals, you'll notice that y itself becomes this blue area. Now, what this is is an intensity plot. So, as y becomes from 0 to 1, we have a bit of alpha, a bit of transparency. And then once it is greater than 1, then it's fully blue. So, if you were to type y divided by 10, well, notice that all the way up from 0 to 10, y goes from 0 to 10 basically and we have from 0 to 1 displayed by our, by our 0 alpha to full alpha now if we were to say x squared plus y squared and maybe sine of this and maybe raise it to the 1 half power we would get this this plot over here which is basically an intensity plot of a three-dimensional figure. So if you were to say um, y equals and then changes to a z and we go to three dimensions, here we have the figure, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to intensity plots um, like this. Maybe um, ABS of cos of x minus cos of y. And then if we were to go to relations and change the opacity, we 
have this. Now let's just get rid of this. And I believe that just about concludes this demonstration. Thanks for viewing and if you have any questions go to www.nullular.com Contact us at contact at nullular.com or you can contact me directly at agapshirinian at nullular.com Thanks for watching.